disruptors and curious minds. Welcome to another episode of Thinking on Paper. I'm Jeremy. This is Mark. We get to talk to the people building and pushing the boundaries on the new systems of the world. We get to ask some really cool questions and we get to kind of picture where we're headed and why we're headed there. Uh, I'm excited. We've had a week off. Uh, Mark's been to Paris moderating panels. There's all kinds of fun stuff. Mark's got a hat. We've got T.O.P. merch now. What the heck yeah. is going on, Mark? How are you? How are you feeling today? I'm good. It's, it's, it feels like we've been away for an eternity. Uh, two weeks feels like forever. So it's good to be back. Um, yeah, I was in Paris last week. Our guest was in Dubai and they got rained out, flooded, flood, flooding in the desert. Right. But um, yeah, today's guest, Stepan. When I was telling people that we were speaking to the CEO of Stepan today, everyone was like, oh, Stepan, I, I remember Stepan. They were, anyone who's been in Web3 or crypto f for a few years remembers the, the move to earn movement kind of started by Stepan. It was gargantuan at one point. Like I wrote about this in the, in the pre-show, like they launched in December, 2020, 21 by April the following year they were worth 4 billion they were doing like they were <laughs> it was insane it was incredible and but obviously a lot's changed so I'm very interested to see how the platform has matured how the community has grown and where where they are now and I totally know agree you've got a vested interest in Stepan as well yeah, I, I, well, I've been at the intersection of, of music and tech and, and actually fitness, believe it or not. I worked with Orange Theory Fitness for, for quite a long time, helping them figure out music and the, how music inspires movement and, and did a lot of deep dive rabbit holes on how sound affects athletic performance and um, got some great questions in that regard. Guy Thompson, thanks for joining us. See you in the chat. Guys, hit us with questions and thoughts and ideas that you have related to this. But a quick thanks to our wonderful sponsor w-r-i-p-p-l-e we pronounce it ripple these guys are marketing's on-demand talent platform over three thousand vetted specialists in their craft and they actually have great folks on their team to help organize multiple disciplines point them to a project that takes two weeks or two years they can do a great job of it check them out they're usually in the chat thread um ray dixie and the team over there are amazing w-r-i-p-p-l-e Dot com. Mark, introduce our guest. Let's dive in. I can't wait, man. Yeah, let's go. So today's guest is Shiti Munghani. She is the CEO of Satoshi Labs, who own Stepan. Um, and I'm going to introduce her and let her do the talking from here on out. So welcome to Thinking on Paper. Hi, Mark. Hi, Jeremy. Pleasure to be here. Firstly, can I just acknowledge what a wonderful vibe it is. Love the way you guys are happy cool clearly you're in it to win it so love being here yes oh Maybe amazing as jeremy always says we would literally be doing this if nobody watched and nobody listened so it's, <laughs> i think that's quite important i mean but maybe that's what you would do maybe that's part of the step and success of the community is that you're doing something because you love doing it well let's let's start give us give us just a little little quick background on on how you how are you landed to do what you're doing right now and what excites you most about the role you have today? Right. So let's dive in. Yeah. Um, personally, um, I, I am an engineer and an MBA by background. So I started my career um, in India doing marketing uh, in FMCG. So in foods, actually. And that was the time when digital marketing was taking off, you know, um, things like billboards, um, outdoors, internet marketing was still 1%, uh, ma max sometimes 5% of marketing. And then I've seen that go grow from 5% to double digits to actually sometimes even half of the marketing budget. So from there, I moved to the US to work with PepsiCo. And, and there I worked on cutting edge projects like eye scanning and stuff on marketing. From there, I moved to Europe, worked in Italy, France, Germany, Portugal, Spain, pretty much the length and breadth of it. And then about 10 years ago, I made home in the UK, working at the cross section of marketing and technology. So whether it's digital printing of food or cutting edge marketing stuff uh, or 3D printing of food, um, I've done it all. And then the buck caught me. I uh, did my own startup in AI and fitness space, where we used computer vision, which is basically a fancy name for the lens on your laptop, to measure posture. 
and correct posture using different AI models. Um, so that got me a taste of my own thing as well as fitness, as well as using technology to solve for it. Um, and then I was looking at what next to do in this space. And that's when I came across Teppin. We were in test flight back then. Um, and um, I reached out to the founders, understood their vision, understood what they had in mind, loved the clarity of product that they had. That 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 is what appealed to me the most. Um, long story short, uh, joined them. It was a complete punt, to be honest. Uh, leap of faith. And, I, and looking back, I don't think I could have done anything better. So... Um, when, when After that, that is this was a roughly um, like you said right after we had launched in December 2021 so early late 2021 early 2022 and then I joined full time in January 2022 um so you were there I've, I've when helped... it was going parabolic and oh my god that was journey of a lifetime right so every like those numbers you don't come across in any kind of career like, like like i said even even in the most blue-blooded careers sometimes i would say i would think that we've got a wrong zero right so <laughs> the numbers that, every day we were like adding another zero and um, we were losing it but bear in mind like I, by no means it was an easy thing because we were a very small team like a few of us and and like in designation i was the cbo chief business officer or cmo or whatever but in reality, the, the founders or myself, we are the ones, uh, we are the janitors, we are the ones printing the invoice, we are the ones signing the invoice, we are, we are the ones talking to the users. Um, so it was what tough. Was driving, what was driving, what do you think was driving, like, was timing a part of it? Like, what, culturally, what was it that was pushing Stepan particularly to those heights, do you think? I would say three things. Uh, yes, luck and timing is definitely a part of that. I wouldn't deny. I think I think we were lucky with when we launched the product. We were uh, f we were fortunate with the whole bull market and run. But those are some kind of things that sort of are like beyond control. To be honest, our our launch was very organic. We had just won Solana Hackathon. Um, this was one of the projects that got shortlisted. We were really, really fast to ship and get to market. So um, it, it, it felt very lucky. That was one. Second, um, I think we we got the community right, right? So um, we listened to the community very much. We did not prioritize things like fundraise. Um, like back then, I, I, I because it was bull run, um, you would know this better than I would. Um, there are crazy valuations even now going around like 300. Um, this was something we absolutely did not focus our energies on. In fact, I clearly remember one time discussing this with the founders because back then, best of the investors were knocking at our doors. And um, again, us being few, we had to prioritize where we would allocate our energies. And it was very clear for us. It were only two things, product and community, product and community. So th that would be the second thing. And third would be product. I think by far in sorry if I come across immodest on this, in Web3, we have had one of the best UI UXs. Um, like, sadly, um, a lot of Web3 projects don't even go beyond Discord, which is, which is sort of a tragedy and kind of like what Web3 keeps getting bad rep for. Um, not only did we have a great product, it was a pretty usable product, like, right? So uh, just to give you an example, right? We, we had community from... Uh, Sydney, Melbourne, Los Angeles, Miami, Taipei, Japan, Korea, um, any part of the world, Japan. Um, there were people doing these events. There were people, not just like crypto bros, but their spouses, their moms and dads, push prams, babies. Like this was the first time people were seeing, creating their first wallets, purchasing their first NFTs, seeing such a wholesome involvement. And a lot of that happened organically. So that's that's what we are proud of on the back of good product. One one quick thing too, because we have we our audience is a is a bit of two kinds of people. One is disruptors, people who are aware and are building things and are are taking advantage of this next level technology to reinvent stuff. 
but they're also curious minds, people who are kind of dipping their toe into it and kind of going, wait, what's going on over there? So maybe give us, uh, for, for those that aren't super familiar with it, give us a quick rundown of what Steppen is and, and what the product experience is. Got it. Uh, fair point. Actually, I'll step a back, step one step even further and say FSL, which is the parent studio. Um, we, we've got multiple products. So Stepin is, of course, the biggest one so far. Um, Stepin is a move in an app. Essentially, there is an app on iOS and Android. You download it on your phone. Once you've downloaded that, you purchase an NFT. NFT is in form of a sneaker again there are different kinds of sneaker walker jogger runner trainer which are different speeds once you purchase a sneaker and you walk jog or run you earn cryptocurrencies um, we have our own governance token it is called gmt you can earn gmt or gst in the app and then people can choose to cash out stay in the app and the the game mechanics and the game plays endless and of course you can read about that in the white paper so that's one of the star flagship apps that we've got, which is Stepin. Uh, if, if you were to form a mental model of how FSL works, um, it is, say we've got GMT or the governance token at the center of it, we've got front-facing app, meaning the consumer-facing app. So Stepin is one of them. We recently launched uh, another social game, Web3 game, which is called Gas Hero. Uh, just like Stepin broke Solana, flipped Ethereum, Bitcoin on exchanges at its peak, we also had Gas Hero, which kind of helped it was launched on Polygon and it helped Polygon flip Ethereum. In about 30 days time, we ended up doing over $100 million of volume in trading. Um, so we broke Polygon in a way. Hmm. And these are front facing or user facing apps. But to sort of capture value back in the ecosystem, we also de develop infrastructure. And after some more learnings has been to sort of like take it slow and keep it under radar. Uh, and that's why we build in a lot of stuff without much of the hype. So we've built our NFT marketplace to support the NFT trades, uh, and that's called more. We've built our own uh, DEX, which is a decentralized exchange. It is called Door to enable swaps. We've also recently launched our wallet unifying ID system, which is called as FSL wallet ID. And these are the things we kind of build in, um, in, in behind the scenes to unify and bring value back in the ecosystem. What I mean by that is whether it's GMT mining in step in, whether it's GMT earning in gas hero, whether it's voting and minting on more than every marketplace, whether it's 1% liquidity fee on door or decks, or whether it's FSL ID points, all of the value comes back to GMT in one way or the other, which is the win-win for our community, for our business and for the projects involved. I love just it. A, a yeah. question, just a couple of, perhaps simple questions on Stepan for people who are the curious minds, not the disruptors. You have to have the, the NFT to use the app. So you, it wouldn't be fair to compare it to Strava or one of these tracking apps. It's not like that. Is that correct? Absolutely correct. Okay. And then the, it, you're in, essentially incentivized to move more. And you see, you mentioned different types of NFT walkers, joggers, runners, are they as they are they as they sound if you're a a better runner you'd get the runner and they would yes indeed so each ability? each of the each of the nfts perform best at their optimal speeds so walker is for walking speeds runner is for running speeds and trainer is common for all the speeds so um yes and then within that we've got common uncommon rare legendary all of these attributes which sort of like fit in the gameplay as well and of course you can find more of these details on m.stepin.com there is a detailed white paper on it a lot to, so two quick comments um one the idea of how how you're building this thing is really cool like the idea of having this um, consumer facing thing to engage the community, grow the community. And now you're, it sounds like as a company, you're focusing on infrastructure that'll power the experience moving into the future, right? So you're building on the back end, which is really, really cool. But I think what intrigued me most about Stepin initially was you guys figured out this, uh, everyone talks about this IRL URL bridge, right? This, this digital to in-person bridge to demonstrate how the technology translates. And I think it's really powerful to like be able to like take something in the real world and translate that into a digital experience, assign it value and meaning, 
and then float it back out in the form of a transaction. Like, I think that's pretty awesome. Thank you. Uh, I think, yeah, I, I think she would agree with you, Jeremy. Um, when the we all know what happened. Well, not people that but basically the whole mar the markets crashed. The bull the bull market disappeared. What was different about Stefan? How did you survive all of those massive, massive crashes that took out? I don't know, like ninety percent or more than that. Like where most people died, you survived. What was different, and how did you? What was your role in that and playing that? How did you survive? Mark, that's a great question. Phenomenal. Thank you. And you'd be surprised how few people ask it. Um, because I think it, 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 it takes um, somebody to survive the market to recognize that teams are built differently. To, to, come, to come to your to answer your question, I think just as how luck and timing plays a big role in success of any project, I think team and the resilience of people working on that project plays a big role on its survival. So our success uh, led to us having a healthy treasury, uh, which we were pretty uh, strict about. We, um, we hadn't raised big, like, like I already mentioned, we were not very, very, very hot on fundraise. So we were able to control our burn, burn rate and business in a very methodical way to plan for our runway to last three to five years. So that intention, ambition, vision, integrity was always there to begin with, right? So those are sort of like hygiene, what I call as hygiene. And again, sadly, with a lot of Web3 projects, that's never the hygiene, right? So we, we will not even talk about, about scam and rock calls and stuff like that. Uh, we are a bunch of people who have built things in the past. Jerry, who is the founder, he's a very successful game producer before Step In. Uh, Jan is a very successful blockchain personality. I have built my own startup as well as ha ha had a career. So the, the, the ambition to build a long-lasting legacy in Web3 and blockchain was pretty much there. And then the team alongside us, our colleagues, we're really fortunate to have people who wanted to survive. Was it easy? Hell no, not at all. Uh, you know, the grit and the grind and the daily work when everything is falling apart, when there are really bad times like the FTX crash ma makes you question everything. But as long as you have that North Star of community holding you accountable, of people who still get excited when you post a tweet, of people who will still hold you accountable and still criticize you if you get one thing wrong, one date wrong, one timing wrong and your message inspires you. You're at that point working for that community, for the people. And I think that has a big role to play in how we got by. Um, did, did the community capitulate? Yes, but we were able to survive. So at our peak, we were 5 million registered users. Um, but even today, we have more than 100k da daily active users, which is not a small number for Web3, and we're mighty proud of it. We recently concluded, uh, and, and, and we always, always think of our loyal users at the back of our head. In fact, that is one of the single biggest driver uh, for us. So we concluded Trailblazer, which is an annual airdrop. And again, it's one of the highest in Web3, so it was to the tune of $30 million dollars. Uh, worth of GMT and points. That's one thing we did recently. Second thing we did recently is launch a collaboration with Adidas. Um, it, it was really, really well received by our community. Um, we had over 100 million GMT locked. So that's roughly $30 million. It was one of our most successful raffles ever where we did, launched a co-branded sneaker with Adidas. And um, to have a brand of that caliber partner with us was, of course, uh, very big. That was the second thing uh, that we did recently. The third thing, like I said, we did recently was the FSL ID or the product launch. Um, and I would say each of these pieces will give you an idea why we survive. So the airdrop is the idea of serving our community, of doing things right by our users. The second thing, collab with Adidas, is we've had top ranking collabs throughout this market. So whether it's uh, ASICS, Atletico Madrid, Adidas, Steve Aoki, best of the web too, 
or it's the gods or FFF, the best of Web3. And then the third thing, which is the FSL ID, will give you an idea. We've always launched product. So even in the abyss of bear market, we were launching Gas Hero, a new game. We were launching uh, more door. So we never stopped working. We've had 18 hours work days throughout. Got some questions rolling in uh, in the chat. Where, where does the community, these community numbers, where do they engage? Like, where do they come together? And where do you, uh, yeah, where do you engage them the most? Uh, Twitter and Discord. So um, you're very welcome to, uh, to, to go to Step In Official on Twitter and likewise on Discord for Step In. Uh, and for FSL, you are very welcome to go to FSL Web3. That's the handle on Twitter. I, I think you like that answer, Jeremy, because there was nothing about external forces being responsible for the survival. It was all like the team, the people, the philosophy, the, that North Star that she mentioned. I think that's very, very telling. Um, so yeah, I like to what one question I want to want to ask a question on the not more more on the fitness outcome side than the technology side because i think it's really interesting because people come together uh around doing hard things with good outcomes and how hard things i mean running can be a hard thing right and, you know and fun, things as well. and fun running sport yeah sport is fun. yeah a challenge together but you know what is the community is there anything like bubbling up in the community related to the, hey, I, I joined Steppen and, you know, I didn't really run much before, but now I'm running every day. Is there anything related to fitness outcomes that you're starting to see? Because I think that could be a really interesting uh, thing to check out. Absolutely wild, Jeremy. I mean, um, you know, so every September we do an event which is called the Steppen Ember, right? So it's an anniversary event uh, that we do. Uh, one of the ideas that we had on Step and Ember was how about we uh, trend a hashtag um, uh, um, and, and, and yeah, Step and results and basically where people can just uh, flex what Step and means to them by way of outcomes. I was mind blown at the results, right? So there was um, a story where somebody had recovered from cancer. Now, uh, I, by no way, this is not a medical advice, you know, funny because people always say this is not financial advice. This is how our out outlook is different from Stepin. This is not a medical advice, but Stepin was helpful to that person's journey while in the medical treatment that, that gave them just that added incentive, added push uh, to do physical activity. And as we know, physical activity leads to all kinds of hormones and happiness and this and that. That was one of the stories that really touched me. There were others um, like there was this um, really old person with uh, sort of arthritis kicking in and they had kind of like mixed with winters, you know, December and time, like they've sort of taken indoors and not to mention COVID, loneliness, all the gyms were shut. This kind of gave that person an extra push, go find a friend community to walk together. There was one story that I, that absolutely stays with me all the time. There was a, there was a guy who found uh, somebody in our Discord who stayed two blocks away from them and they ended up becoming like boyfriend and girlfriend. So they found it in themselves. So yeah, lovely stories. And these were like from all parts of the world. In fact, I shared a tweet, it must be somewhere on my timeline where there were countries like I didn't know the names of and from length and breadth because people were sharing that outdoors. So one week of that was outcomes. The second week of like was the beautiful scenery. And, and people tag you, right? So there was like, it was not geo, uh, but for, for, for outdoors. So uh, it was really heartening to see people from all parts of the world. I like that push and I'm going to hold my hands up here and admit to my skepticism about move to earn, play to earn, run to earn. There was a lot of imitators of Stepan. And at one point I felt like mm -hmm. I, I almost had to turn off the internet because I could literally turn off the internet to earn and it, it, became, it became silly and one of I was looking at it through me and I love sport and I don't need an incentive to get out there and move and I realized that that's wrong because most people a lot of people do need an incentive and they they people want to get fit they want to get healthy they want to move more and for whatever reasons they don't do it enough or as much as they'd like to and anything that pushes people to move more uh, i'm actually for how much can you earn what's the incentive so if my 
my my brother spends all day on the couch he's gonna do he's gonna take the walker and my wife who's kind of getting into running she's gonna take the runner because she wants to do more what what does the incentive look like Shiti? Yeah, it's a function of a lot of things, Mark. So it's a function of the kind of shoe you purchase to kind of how many energies do you stack up? The gameplay is quite exciting, right? So it's not as boring as you just purchase an NFT sneaker and you earn, right? So there are different level unlocked. But to cut long, long story short, you can earn from $10 or $5 per session enough to buy you a coffee to even hundreds. And people have mined even thousands. So I don't know how people do it. Frankly, even I don't know. Uh, but they unlock um, the, the, in our Discord, you will find several travel, several strategy channels where people of different uh, rare, legendary, epic, rainbow uh, sneakers flock together and discuss strategies on how how best to earn. How so? You mentioned stacking energies. Like, talk talk to me about that. What is? How does? How do you do that? <laughs> So um, every ten minutes, um, every ten minute session give, you have gets a protein you energies. Shake, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> quite literally, uh, quite literally. So the uh, the game module or the earning module is a function of um, your GST cap. Um, GST is one of the game tokens in addition to game token, and then there is a daily energy cap. So we start with two energies, but then your maximum energy cap per day can go up to twenty. Um, and I think daily GST cap is five on five and the GST cap peaks at 300. And um, if I start talking about all the formulae, et cetera, you, you will, I'm, I'm pretty sure you will get bored. But if you go to our white paper, which is whitepaper.stepin.com and you go to game modules or earning modules, then you can easily find what energy and um, GST caps are. But the most important tip that I can give users is to buy the right kind of sneaker. Right. So a walker, for example, is a sneaker that's optimal speed is one to six kmph. Jogger speed is four to 10 kmph. Runner speed is eight to 20 kmph. And trainer is the most common one, which is a one to 20 kmph. So you can now buy a sneaker for as low as $30. In fact, uh, at one point, they used to be like $5,000, $3,000. Of course, the more expensive one, the Genesis one, still run for $3,000. The Adidas one that we just raffled was 10K GMT, which is roughly $3K. So, and, but the earnings also uh, are, are in proportion to that. So, so if you're, if you're, a, if, if you're like a glutton for punishment like me and you just, you know, <laughs> throw a weight vest on and go run for like an hour and a half. Like there would be a cap to what I could earn based on the energy I have collected in the app before I start running. Right. I couldn't just continuously run for two days and try to. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That's part of the gameplay, right? Otherwise our economy will crash. Uh, however, you can unlock more energies. You can unlock more caps with of course, uh, whatever upgrades, NFTs, because you can mint a new sneaker as well. So if you've got two sneakers, you can mint a new sneaker. You can have gems, you can have sockets. There are different kinds of NFTs. So the gameplay is quite exciting. That's really cool. So you mentioned the founder is, you know, kind of a, you know, has history in game development and design and, and all of that good stuff. Like I worked with a few fitness companies in, in designing experiences that basically pull you in um, to, you uh, to kind of pull you in a little bit closer because you're, you have an inner voice. Whenever you're in a fitness experience, there's an inner voice that's saying, Oh, my legs are tired. You know, I'm, I need to stop now. I'm, you know, something else is telling you that you can't do it. The whole inner critic thing. So we design these experiences. They're almost like journeys using sound, using music and all of that kind of stuff. Is there any, uh, are you guys designing like races or experiences where like Mark and I together could do the, the X, Y, Z race, you know, presented by step in, like, are you guys thinking about that? So we do a lot of offline events as well across the world, right? Like we mentioned, um, the idea has always been for people to come together in IRL space um, as well. We uh, had thought of marathon mode in the app, but that's sort of on, on the pause button right now because there have been other developments that we've been undertaking in the app. So for now, yes, we do have the solo mode in which people run independently, can share their journeys or can share the map without revealing any uh, privacy or private details. Um, sadly, again, Jeremy, one of the pitfalls of Web3 space is 
we have to protect users' identity. So um, it's a decentralized space. We don't have their data. So enabling social experiences is that much more like riskier or you'll have to, let's just put it way, that way that we don't want to rush into it. Makes sense. Um, you should sponsor Parkrun. Do you have Parkrun in America, Jeremy? In, in I haven't heard of that, I don't think. In the, in the UK, and I think it's representative of the power of running and sport to bring people together. In, in the UK, it's called Parkrun, and literally in every town, every city across the UK, on a Saturday morning, people go to the park and they run together. And it, I think it's I think millions of people do every Saturday. It's something that Stefan should sponsor. But one of the, I don't know how to, to to word this, but one of my Web three passions at the moment is Farcaster, and I see a similarity mm. between how you're speaking about Stepan and how Farcaster speaks about Farcaster. Is it seems very they're solving problems, real world problems for people who aren't in the Web three crypto bubble, but sometimes the the messaging and the complexity of it seems to be mm. to hinder. On the one hand, everyone's talking about onboarding the next billion, yada, yada, yada. But on the other hand, they seem to be building for the people who are already there. How are you, how are you balancing that? How are you getting new people in and they have to buy an NFT? I mean, most people are like, oh, what? So how, how, yeah, how are yeah. you balancing that? Another great question. So I would again say by three ways. The first is product itself. Um, so recently we partnered with Apple and enabled Apple Pay. In fact, one of the very few apps, if not the only consumer games app to have Apple Pay. So just by a double click on the phone, you don't have to get into wallet and this and purchase and that purchase. You can simply buy NFT using Apple Pay. That's one. So product-led experiences. Second, I would say with collabs. So um, Steve Aoki is a great Grammy uh, winner, musician. Um, Adidas, again, a Web2 community. And we are going to be partnering with them on the product side as well. So the second would be through collabs. Um, and then the third would be in trying to do... Um, these offline events or these social experiences which are not solely limited to our app or web3 um, for example when we did the fsl wallet integration which i just spoke about the idea behind that is that can we use a simple email login right so just the way we log into web2 using a gmail or a facebook login and we don't have to create another account another id every time another password we are creating something called as FSL ID where people will just have to input their email ID and they can log in. So first we will create that for FSL ecosystem, our suite of apps, and then for uh, uh, the ecosystem outside. And that's sort of like the idea. Uh, so yeah, we are simplifying things on product side, whether it's Apple Pay or FSL ID, we're simplifying things with collab and with um, iron experiences. So as we, as we have like, say a new user comes in and you know they're not really web3 savvy at all and this this great flow experience with apple pay and you set up the wallet and it's kind of set up for them but then they start learning now that they're in oh this web3 thing this all makes sense i can actually own and hold this stuff is there a is there a transfer mechanic where i'm not sure if you guys it's a it's a custodial non-custodial kind of wallet thing but how do you go from uh if someone wants to use the easy button to get into web three and then they're like oh man i want to put this all on my ledger and do it all myself how have you guys handled that transition yeah so people can um, send the sneakers to each other uh, of course using um, we have a wallet we have a spending wallet which is the inventory and when then we have a wallet which is a web three wallet so for playing in the game they have to take the assets to inventory and that's how the game is played but if should they choose to transfer it to another wallet or another person they will have to send to a wallet so it's a very seamless experience i mean um, very intuitive for, for for that matter not complicated at all Very cool. So where, where, uh, so you mentioned intersections in your background, you know, this intersection of, um, tech and marketing, and, you know, you have these two things that kind of blend together over time and, uh, generate really interesting things like, so, so fitness and web three, if you look at those two as the, as the intersections, what is the adjacent possible 
in between those in the next few years? What are you seeing? What are you excited about? The first thing would be what we have also been talking about for the large part, which is the seamless onboarding, right? So whether it's simple things like pass keys, and we see that Coinbase and Binance, in fact, we at our end are also trying to enable that. Um, that'll take care of all the seed phrases and different kinds of wallet creation and this and that. So there will be newer experiences, newer technologies, newer enablements that will in enable people to onboard Web3 without realizing, without all the hassle, without all the complication, without the possibilities of hacks, scams, rug pulls onto Web3. I know it sounds like a pipe dream, but it's not too far away. So that would be one. Um, second thing I'm excited about is the combination or the merging point of AI and, and blockchains. I know these are two buzzwords which have been so abused uh, by everyone right now, but having worked quite deeply in both these fields, uh, I think they, they are so complementary. Like AI is centralized where people use their assets, um, they control everything, and blockchain is the complete opposite of that, where there is decentralized, there's, there's no trust whatsoever that is required, and you can actually wet identities. And together, they will be so complementary where... Um, there will be verification and the trustlessness of blockchains used to verify things that AI agents and uh, big LLM models can do for us. So that's the second thing I'm really excited about. Um, third thing I'm really excited about are the real world applications. And once again, our WAs have had a fair share of their hotness or trendiness, um, but sooner than later, maybe it may not happen this year. And and even deep in for that matter, decent, decentralized, physical infrastructure where basically you are rewarding people in a decentralized way to either map, so uh, collect maps of across the world. So for example, Google Maps, the way Google Maps was done, imagine now if you were able to reward people for um, each of the snapshot at the last mile location, um, and that can be enabled by blockchain, the micro payments, or for that matter, um, rare diseases, right, or gene sequencing, things that, or SETI, um, the, the satellite. So where individual contributions are needed at a, at a decentralized level, blockchains really give us the power to coordinate in a way that hasn't been done before. And, and humanity is where it is, thanks to this coordination. Like today, nobody, nobody sits in London and decides 11 million breads will be produced. But somehow those 11 million breads are produced, they are shipped in a package, they are put on trucks and they're distributed at the right place, right time and people get their breads in the morning. So this collective uh, ability to coordinate is what has got humanity here through agricultural industrial revolution. And now blockchains can help us coordinate with the right incentives without placing trust in a single power, single entity, and therefore less scope for manipulation in a way like never before. Sorry, that was a long-winded answer. But everything will be tokenized and everything will be incentivized. And um, which, I, which I like about Stephen is that if everything is tokenized and everything is incentivized, at least people are moving and running and doing sport and are having that kind of physical movement where they're not just that dystopian view of sitting at home clicking buttons trying to be earn money and i realize that, that that it's much more serious when you go to the bankless the world that's not banked and this gives opportunity for people who aren't banked to be banked and i think that distribution bigger picture of distribution of finance and wealth i mean maybe it's a bit utopian but okay. so yeah, so yeah, you yeah. know where so she solana, you know we, we have to talk about solana jeremy well, just just real quick, I want to I want to inject a, a a random thought experiment. Okay, so she in the in the beginning in our pre production chat, we talked about the challenges of coordinating time between time zones when you have an organization distributed all over the world, all various time zones, and you mentioned blockchain as one of the things that could help us coordinate really complicated things. All right, so in the next two minutes, let's reinvent time using blockchain. Go. <laughs> <laughs> do you have an answer to this Jeremy? Because uh... i don't i don't that's why it's a thought experiment we we'll have to probably run a proof of history protocol so solana is proof of history just the way bitcoin is proof of work and ethereum is proof of stake 
So if we can run a blockchain or consensus mechanism, so blockchains are what, right? There is data storage and there is consensus mechanism. You store data on many computers, which is what we call as decentralized storage. And then somehow these decentralized computers talk to each other, come to agreement about one thing, which is the consensus mechanism. And that's how your problem gets solved. And that's how we verify the ledger. And that's how um, the computationally that data is encrypted or encoded, right? So if somehow we can all agree that this is the time, because time is a human construct, like we said, right? This is the time based on proof of history or a mathematical alg algorithm. And that common time is what we all align on. Um, and we'll call this as a POH chain, the proof of history chain, yeah. I love it. Like if the three of us were the, there are only three locations in the, in the world and we each are at one of them. And at certain intervals, we would get a ping and just be like, Hey, yeah, are you good? Are you good? This is the time. Are we good? Um, I don't know. It's just, it's always, it's always fun to think about. It's always fun to think about just like, you know, big picture applications to, to some of this stuff. And I appreciate you, uh, entertaining my, my, my crazy thought experiment. Um, so, let me, uh, so you wanted to talk about Solana real quick, Mark? I was just wondering what it was like to be actually uh, the last couple of months to be in the most ridiculous, <laughs> raging, kind of exciting time in Solana to be actually in there working at the coalface, so to speak, and how it's been the last couple of months. To be honest, like Solana, uh, Toli, Raj, Anatoly, their founder, that's magnificent people magnificent founders they've not given up like in the face of ftx crash the the kind of the kind of stresses they have endured uh, it's it's just amazing um as builders uh, they have the deepest appreciation and regards and once you have such leaders driving the community community feels inspired so <laughs> I just want to just say hats off to Solana community, hats off to all the builders building on Solana, keeping the momentum. We need more of this energy. We need more of this energy in crypto and Web3. And I hope I hope all of us can continue to build and um, see another big bull cycle coming ahead. Check out this comment. <laughs> time isn't real Indeed. it's only now running across a circle of unknown size guy that was amazing man i i love uh i love the way you think um is it to do with like how far light no that's a meter is it like how far light travels in a certain amount of time and um like a confusing distance and time careful we're about to jump off the rabbit hole cliff uh, I'm never the one pulling the conversation back in. I'm always like pushing it out. But no, I, I want to be mindful of time in in your contributions, uh, Shidi. I, I really appreciate it. What we tend to do is um, try to connect our episodes in in fun ways, right? Connect our community in fun ways. What is a question that you've been pondering related to the intersections that you're playing in, whether it is emerging tech, whether it's marketing, whether it's being a builder, whether it's fitness, whatever it is, what is a question that you have been pondering that we could leave for our next guest next week? So one of our core missions, and in fact, the only driving force is how do we get as many users as possible to Web3, right? And I know everybody says like we will we, we'll onboard the next 100 billion users onto Web3, but guess what? That's not gonna happen, right? You don't bring users to Web3 you bring web three to users, right? So how do we how do we enable that process? So in so the question that I can leave behind and, and in that effort, and I think Mark asked that question to which I responded, you know, we enable that through product, through collabs, through um, the things that we do uh, infrastructure wise. So what are some of the other things that say, if you are in crypto already, say your partner, your mom, your dad, your child would love to see, would love to happen. Like you've seen them play amongst us or you've seen them turn on a YouTube video. So you need know how intuitively they, uh, like all of us say we are technophobes, but frankly, all of us are using technology one way or the other. Uh, really, like electricity is the best technology that we are all using. This zoo, this call, our health, our infrastructure, everything runs on tech electricity. And we never for a minute say, oh, wow, electricity is such a marvelous technology. <laughs> but the best technologies are the ones that fade away in the background. 
So how do we make sure blockchain stays away where it belongs in the backdrop, in the backdrop, in the background? And how do we enable these user experiences? So yeah, send us all the ideas that you've got and we'll see what we can make work happen. That's a great question. They're gonna enjoy answering that. Um, can I just say, go back to the beginning, my posture has been really good since you mentioned posture. I did the same I, thing, Mark. I went. Do you like subconsciously, if someone says the word posture, it's like, oh yeah, better better sort my posture. And I know it's for a different conversation, but I really want to talk about how we can use AI to increase, like my posture is terrible. Everyone sits down at a desk for eight hours a day. And if anything like that can help, it's another conversation. But next time, Chita, you'll have to come on and speak about that. Amazing. This has been a wonderful conversation. Anything else you'd love to leave our audience with information about what's coming up, what you're doing, like anything um, from that perspective? I mean, we have some exciting announcements coming up for Stephen. So make sure you are tuned into our Twitter. That's the best way to, to get the most recent updates. And the Twitter handle is Stephen Official. Sounds amazing. Another quick shout out to our sponsor, W-R-I-P-P-L-E. We pronounce it Ripple. Their marketing's on-demand talent platform, over 3,000 vetted solopreneurs, coordinated beautifully by uh, internal experts at Ripple. Mark, I saw you floating books around. We have a book club. I don't know if you guys know this, book but we club, read books. Book books are the original technology, right? Stories They're and books best. and all Timeless of that. Timeless technology. Indeed. Timeless. What's better than reading by yourself? Read with us. Unpack it with us. We do it uh, all the time. We got a new book coming out. Mark, hit him with some details. Well, I can't because we haven't confirmed the next book, but we have read The Nexus. <laughs> we have read Clear Thinking and we have read The Design of Everyday Things, classics, and they're all available on YouTube on thinkingonpaper.xyz. You go listen to them and uh, join the book club. I'm trying to get Mark, Sheedy, I'm trying to get Mark to read. Uh, I suggested <laughs> two Buckminster Fuller books and he says France can't get them. And I'm saying France is holding back uh, on the secrets just... of the universe. <laughs> you know, they're like rare, rare books. I'd have to go. I'd have to go to. I don't know where I'd have to go to get them, but um, we'll sort. Can out. I make a recommendation, if you'll yes. allow me? Please. So um, I'm inspired by the comment that you flashed, Jeremy. Uh, there's a book called Arrow of Time by the scientist Car, um, Car Carlo Ravioli. He's an Italian modern day physicist, but the way he writes is very, very simple. Uh, I mean, if I can understand, anybody can understand. So um, go check it out. I have a feeling you guys will love it. I love him. I've read one of his quantum mechanics books uh, and it was br it was written like a poem. Like I felt like I read a poem, yes. but I got some not. We'll have to, let's look at that. Mark. Arrow of let's time. Like, okay, that's it. We, we've just, okay, we've conferred hour of time and then we'll do the book. <laughs> like, oh, Bucky Fuller gets kicked to the curb, whatever, the man. One. But like, yeah, let's do, let's do hour of time. Let's do it. I love it. Thanks for the recommendation. Uh, hey, Audience, thanks for joining. We really appreciate it. Um, www.thinkingonpaper.xyz. Be disruptive. Stay curious. Keep thinking on paper. See you next time.